Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you, Natalie. Yeah. Sí, gracias. Okay. Thank you, Natalie. Well, I was going to uh, introduce all my colleagues, but thanks to Natalie, all, we all know them. Uh, okay. First of all, I would like to thank Cartif, especially. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think Michael's enough for me. Okay. Okay. I will try not to move. It's not the first time I have this problem <laughs> in an event. Uh, and thanks, thank uh, especially to Julia Vicente uh, for having invited me today. Uh, when Julia told me to, to come here with you today uh, for this final conference of the Optimal Project, I thought, oh yes, of course, I have to be there. Uh, but to be honest, the only thing I knew about this project was the title and the website. And um, these last weeks I've been well, studying the, the project, the booklet and everything. And I have to say that I'm impressed. And after this, uh, these presentations we have seen today, I'm, I'm very, very I'm astonished of um, the ambition of the project, the ambition of the, of the aims and the results that, that you have achieved. And I want to congratulate all of you, all the consortium, but because this is incredible. And I agree with, uh, with our colleague from Veolia this morning, who asked um, when is this going to be in the market? Because I think all, uh, all, the, all the companies of the sector are going to, to, to buy it. I represent uh, here today I say it's a cluster, it's an association of uh, companies and research centers like Cartif. Um, we have mm, some uh, big companies like Ferrovial Agroman, uh, the, the same uh, as ACCIONA or FCC. They are very well known, but really the, the, our business fabric, our companies in this sector, in construction sector, are very, very small. Even we have many associates uh, who are just one person, one architect or one engineer. And this type of, uh, of tools uh, uh, should be um, disseminated to all the sector, to all these companies. And we, a cluster uh, can help to do this, to put everybody in common, everybody working together and, and going on on this, this aims of the project. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you uh, Iker, Elin and Maxime. You all know them, so I think the most interesting thing is now is to present your cases, your demonstration cases, maybe in one, if it's one in five minutes. Iker, you want to maybe you want to begin? Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Iker Martinez. I work in Fomento de San Sebastián, which is the Economic Development Agency of uh, the Municipality of San Sebastián. Um, before we go to the discussion, I would like to give a short over overview uh, about the work we are doing in San Sebastián related with the renewable energies, energy efficiency, and the framework uh, to, to optimal. Um, in 2009, we created the renewable energy efficiency cluster of San Sebastian um, as an economic uh, decision for promoting the sector in, in the city. Um, um, sorry. Um, um, after some years of, uh, uh, of that time, the cluster and the sector has an evolution and we um, merged to another situation, the smart energy cluster of San Sebastian, and nowadays we are more focusing on Donostia Smart City. Mm -hmm. So in 2015, we developed a smart city plan for, for San Sebastian. 
around 200 people took part in the development of uh, this uh, document. It was a very interesting practice and um, a very, we get a, a very good results. We defined an action plan for 2016 and 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was important because uh, we get uh, a political approved of that uh, document and we started implementing this document in the city. Um, we have been putting our efforts in one district, uh, Urumea Riverside District, which mm -hmm. we are trying to show here in the, <laughs> in the screen. We decided to, to focus in, in one district to try to demonstrate that uh, sustainable uh, districts are possible. So uh, this district, which we call uh, Urumea Riverside District, is uh, comprised by three main areas. Uh, the first one is a, a residential neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We have also an industrial era, area with more than 350 companies. And we have also a a green park. The, um, the residential uh, neighborhood, which is um, the pilot project for Optimal, um, had many problems in the past. Uh, um, for example, flooding risk uh, from the river, uh, bad mobility and bad uh, connection to the city center low income, uh, old buildings with uh, low energy performance. So something was needed. The municipality decided to develop a new urban plan for this district, um, promoting the construction of uh, new houses, uh, a district heating, a better connection to the city center. So it was defined as a strategy in the municipality, not just the urban development, but also um, in other fields. And, and we started uh, working in, in this part. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Here we can see the Chomin residential neighborhood. Mm -hmm. This is the new urban plan for, for this district. It's now under development. New houses uh, are uh, constructing now. And here we can see that there are some old uh, houses uh, between the, the new big buildings. And there we identified the need for retrofitting these, these old buildings. Mm -hmm. So we started working with, with the project and the optimal project was a very interesting, a very interesting approach to test uh, new possibilities and to put in practice uh, here in San Sebastian. We have also here different kind of projects that uh, I'm not going to, to explain now, but one of the, the most relevant is that we are um, developing a district heating system. It is in operation since uh, October and will give service to the all new buildings and the, the old ones. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, the main fuel is biomass. It will cover around 85% uh, of the energy demand. And we have also uh, gas boilers to, to cover the peaks. And in this framework is uh, where we are testing now the, the platform in Optimal Project. Okay, thank you, Iker. Okay, uh, Elin, uh, your case is in Sweden. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in the south of Sweden, in a city called Lund, uh, and I work for the municipality, for the service department that owns all the municipal buildings, and I work as an environmental strategist, so I'm not a building expert, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been working with this, and um, uh, as a context, I can just mention that we have a goal uh, to be 100% uh, fossil fuel free as an organization uh, in 2020, so mm -hmm. it's pretty soon and uh, yeah. we have uh, almost reached this, I think we're on 97 or 98% wow. right now, <laughs> but on the building side we're totally fossil fuel free. 
since last year. Uh, we have a 100% fossil fuel free uh, district heating system that covers most part of the uh, city centre and uh, uh, also some villages outside. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, we have a few uh, oil boilers left, but those are uh, fueled by uh, um, renewable oil <laughs> RME uh, oh, okay. like from rapeseeds. Uh, and uh, we also have a few natural gas boilers, but those are uh, fueled with biogas mm -hmm. nowadays. Uh, so uh, we're uh, on our way, but we have a quite uh, old building stock with uh, lots of uh, uh, refurbishment needs and mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a very good, um, uh, we, we're not up to, to the right speed, uh, uh -huh. we're uh, doing the worst bits, <laughs> okay. kind of, and trying to keep up. Uh, and. Uh, this is the school that we choose to work with in the optimal project. It's called Pool, Poolhem School. It's a high school in, near the city center. Uh, and it's quite large. Uh, and we choose this because um, we needed to have a, like a small district. We needed to have buildings near each other uh, to be able to do the simulations. And uh, uh, as a municipality, we don't own uh, any housing uh, because that's another part of it. It's a uh, housing company, okay. uh, municipal com uh, company. Uh, so we only owe, uh, own schools and preschools and so on, and they're pretty scattered around the city. Oh. Uh, so here we had a group of buildings that mm -hmm. we could work with. Um, we can take the next slide. Uh, it's eight houses. Mm -hmm. um, and you have the square meters there, so it's uh, sizes that varies a bit, and also the building years uh, have a wide range from 1914 to 1991. Uh, so it's different techniques, different kinds of buildings. Um, uh, well, materials yeah. also, maybe. Yeah, different materials, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, next slide. Um, it's heated by district heating, as I said, 100% renewable. Uh, the energy consumption in 2016 mm -hmm. was 154 kilowatt hours per square meter and uh, it's not one of our worst uh, houses <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, um, as I said we needed to, to work with a group of buildings so, so we choose this uh, and we don't have any uh, retrofitting plans yet um, but we will see after the optimal simulations <laughs> maybe we get some ideas of what we could do. Okay, thank you Elin. Uh, Maxime, uh, you are going to present us the case of Trento in Italy because the representative can, couldn't come today. Um, you can tell us about this case. Well, I, I will be quicker. But uh, yeah, basically, the, so the case is uh, located. The case study is, uh, is located in uh, Trento in Italy, in the north of Italy, um, and uh, the, um, the buildings are used. Uh, to for uh, student and uh, professor housing from the Trento University, um, and what is um, let's say original in this in this uh, case is that uh, as you can see on the picture, the the buildings are not so old, uh, and this was mm -hmm. this was uh, one of the biggest surprise when we were there, is that uh, we we were saying well they do not need to be refurbished, you know, they, are <laughs> used, they, they should work. Uh, Properly, let's say, and um, and we had discussion with the owner, and and basically he said that um, they have they have two main issues, let's say, for the timing with those buildings: uh, the operational uh, cost. Yeah. So basically, it consumes too much energy in comparison to what was expected, and also some uh, user comfort uh, issues related to ventilations and so on. So. Uh, well, th this is really the, 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 the main, let's say, objective. I think uh, if you go to the next slide, yeah. Yeah, so it's, that's, um, as you can see, th those are quite recent buildings, but uh, even though they are recent, they cons consume quite a lot of energy, and, and mm -hmm. the, yeah, the objective, and al also fossil, f fossil fuel. So the objective is uh, yeah, to reduce uh, operational energy costs and to improve also user comfort. Okay. Ok, thank you. Julia, I'm going to ask you. Me, me avisas cinco minutos antes porque no he subido el reloj. 
antes de las cuatro. Ok. Ok. Uh, after you, this um, uh, three years, no, three years and a half, three years and a half of project, uh, what would you say uh, is the main lesson that you have learned? But just in one phrase, in one sentence, what, what have you learned um, being part of this consortium, of this project? Yeah, for me, I would say that uh, it's a new approach to, to develop uh, retrofitting projects um, involving all the stakeholders and to get an optimal scenario. Okay. Yes, Elaine. and I would say uh, that it has uh, shown us the possibilities of using BIM models and also uh, how we can choose measures with a better understanding of what result they will, will give. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Maxime? And, well, I give probably more technical <laughs> <laughs> because uh, yeah. so not not talking for the tra uh, Trento representative Trento, yeah. for the Trento case, but yeah, um, for me it's it's um, I mean all those uh, integration, I mean, having all the tool in a single place for me is, is really the, the 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 perfect thing in this in mm -hmm. this platform, and um, and also I think it's uh, and and we discussed this during the trainings we made. Uh, it's pushing the use of uh, beams and IFC files, and, and well, mm -hmm. I think in the consortium we are all mm -hmm. um, convinced that this is the future. So even though it's not, it's difficult to have those files and so on to work here with those uh, type mm -hmm. of, of that data uh, for the time being. It's it's moving forward, and and I think this is also one of the key messages uh, I got from from the the project. Yeah, uh, uh, how used are you to in your your administration? So, well, in your case, I guess it's quite useful. Used to work in BIM um, to um, for public per case, for example. Um, what is the the use of BIM? Is it useful? Is it not at no. all? Almost, I would say, uh, after having asked the uh, building project managers. Oh. Okay. In your case, yeah, in, in San Sebastian? In our case, in Fomento de San Sebastian, there is nobody actually using uh, BIM models. I know that in the municipality, the urban developers and uh, architects are aware of BIM models. Now mm. we are too. But uh, no, it's not, uh, we are not using it uh, in this moment. At all. That's mm, quite a barrier in the, in the sector. Yeah. If, if you want to interrupt me, any one of you at any time or discuss between you, no problem. Eh? This is a round table. We are, between, we are among friends. <laughs> okay, so would you say that goals of the project has, uh, have been achieved? Yes or no? Yes, yes or not? Or maybe partially? <laughs> Yeah, or more than 100 percent. In my case, um, it has been very stimulating to participate and, and follow up the progress of development and of the platform, and especially using the platform with the real case of San Sebastian, mm -hmm. with the local companies and agents. So yeah, for me, I would say that my goals and expectations mm -hmm. has been achieved. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Okay. Yeah. No, I know that there are uh, difficult and important barriers to overcome to, to get this platform to the market, mm -hmm. but this is other issue. Mm -hmm. And I'm just talking about our experience in San Sebastian and it has been positive. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, we, we didn't have so much expectations in the beginning. <laughs> we didn't really know what the outcome would be, but uh, it, it looks really good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and in the case of Trento, uh, you think they, they have achieved the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I, I discussed it uh, with the representative because I was there last week. And then, yeah, basically, they, let's say, not considering the technical aspect and so on. And, and again, I'm coming back to this topic, but I think it's, it's important. Mm -hmm. um, they really appreciate the fact that it's, it's, it helps to bring, let's say, the beam things into the into the current into the real practices, mm -hmm. and then, and they were really seeing this tool as a way to 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 do it and to promote the use of mm -hmm. beam and to say basically, 
look at what we can do with those type of, of, uh, of files and so on. And mm -hmm. uh, so please use it and, okay. and try to, to use it as much as possible. Okay, we can say to the officer, to the European officer, uh, goals achieved. Okay, perfect. Um, one of the aims of the Optimal project uh, was integrating stakeholders' uh, needs and, and work. Uh, how difficult has it been to, to put all of them together? All, all of you, on, I don't know if the citizens or users. Yeah, working, Has it been difficult? Working with um, stakeholder and citizens is not, uh, is not an easy task. Mm -hmm. But we believe that uh, the participation of local stakeholders uh, in the retrofitting projects is a critical uh, factor. Mm -hmm. And that's why before we started the retrofitting project, uh, we contacted the neighborhood association of the district uh -huh. and we let them know about our plans and our strategy for the district. So mm -hmm. that uh, helped a lot to introduce them our, our ideas. And on the other hand, as we are the managers of the Donostia Smart Cluster in San Sebastian, mm. we, we have uh, regular meetings with the local companies and local agents. Uh, we get them feedback, their ideas, their needs. And, and we also uh, present our projects, uh, given the opportunity to, to participate in, in, this, in this project. So in this way, we, we try to, to involve mm -hmm. uh, local stakeholders in, in the projects. And what is their feedback? Um, because the, I, I can guess that companies and citizens are different. Totally. Yeah. Totally. We, we get very positive feedback from companies mm -hmm. because they see that we are uh, in some way trying to help them to promote the sector and mm -hmm. using the city as a defense for innovative projects. But uh, with uh, citizens is uh, totally different. They have other things in mind mm -hmm. and it's a very long process to talk with them and to explain in a simple way the, the project. It's a very, very complicated process. Indeed. Yeah. Maybe as, as much as they understand the project, they are more receptive, they receive better the idea or the, no? Maybe. It's yeah. a question of knowing, understanding, and it's a question of time also. It was a very interesting point in, in the trainings mm -hmm. because uh, some companies, uh, explained that we should change for the perspective that the energy retrofitting saves money, that it saves, mm -hmm. but uh, focus more in, in healthy uh -huh. solutions, uh, comfort, and this kind of uh, different parameters. We always try to sell the project from an economic point of view, but some companies are saying that uh, this is not the good uh, approach. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely agree. Uh, it's just to, to go in the same direction in the training in San Sebastian. It was, I remember that someone said from the company was saying, um, what we, we need tools to help to convince the, the, the citizens uh, of, of the projects we are doing. Um, I mean, Obviously, optimal is not this tool, uh, for sure, but it's not the purpose of the tool, so <laughs> no of problem. But, but definitely, this is probably, and then the, the step forward is, is that you have the solutions, the technical solutions, let's say, but then how to convince